Swimming Pool Steve here with another swimming pool equipment installation review. Uh, let's get started here. Uh, the first thing I see here is a suction manifold that I like. Two inch suction lines with street, or sorry, sweep elbows, not street elbows. Now I do find that this diverter valve is a little close to the pump intake. It would have been nice if they moved the pump that way about 10 inches to give you a nice straight run into the pump. Um, the manifold's better than average, uh, especially because of the two inch lines, but again, I would prefer to see a nice long straight run into the, the, that pump. Same with the, the back side of the pump, they've gone with a street elbow right out the top side connection, which is definitely not how you want to do that. It's, uh, you're, you're causing a lot of friction loss in this system that doesn't need to be there, making the pump work a lot harder than it should. Um, actually, before I move on, I'll just mention this. I don't talk about electrical too much, but that's not right. If you've got electrical tape holding it together, or if the lines split completely and the, uh, the re residential wire is just sticking out there, that's, that's not how you want to have that. There's, there's always a lot of water being splashed around with swimming pool systems, so it would be nice to see wet connects on all the electrical. And this electrical is even better than average, being that they had the right stuff, it's just fallen into a state of disrepair. Um, so it's, it's better than average, but could be better. Okay, so here we go, another sweep elbow into a street elbow. No reason to have street elbows at all in this system when you could have sweep elbows. Now this is just a stay right cartridge filter, a little bit on the small side, but this pool itself is small. Uh, so in and out of the cartridge filter, and we go into a stay right heater here. The, refer to these as the R2-D2 units, you can probably see why that is. The only thing I don't like about these units is they don't have feet to mount them the, the way that uh, other uh, heaters like Hayward, Jandy, Master Temp from Pantera, anything like that. There's no way to mount that one to the ground to stop it from shaking around. Uh, so we come out or into that heater with a street elbow. Again, no reason for a street elbow there at all. That should be sweep, nothing else. Uh, out of the heater, and here we go straight into a Zodiac saltwater chlorinator. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that this is not acceptable. There's no check valve in between that line to prevent the chlorinated water from traveling backwards through the heater and, or traveling backwards through the system and corroding out that heater. It's guaranteed to happen. You're going to reduce the service life on that heater. Especially because this is a Zodiac system. Zodiac runs at 4,000 parts per million as opposed to 3,000 or less like most systems. So it's really a worst case scenario here. I would definitely like to see a check valve in that line. Uh, getting back to the return manifold here, we've got a union for winterizing and then two street elbows going into the inch and a half pipe. It's a fairly serious flow restriction, especially since everything in this room is two inch above the pad. I would have preferred to see two inch lines all the way back to the pool, but if you are going to go to inch and a half, at the very least you could have put some sweep elbows there instead of the street elbows, because that is a fairly significant flow restriction. Uh, so that's everything that's part of the circulation system. Last thing over here, they've got uh, booster pump, there's a fairly large rock waterfall in this this pool and that's what we've got here. Again, suction line, you've got the street elbow right into a single union ball valve into a male adapter into the front side of the pump. That's three serious flow restrictions one after the other and the proximity of those one close to the next actually makes it even worse um, because it's the turbulence in the water increasing the rate of friction loss. The water becomes very turbulent in the street elbow when it meets the single union ball valve, it's already turbulent. There's already a lot of friction being lost in that water, and then it hits another serious flow restriction before it has a chance to straighten back out and run smoothly. So this is an example of a very poorly designed uh, suction manifold, especially this, since this pump is fairly powerful because it's designed to move a ton of water over top of that waterfall. Same thing as the other pump at the top side. We've got a street elbow right away, and there's no reason for that. Give it, give the pipe, or give the pump ten times the pipe diameter in a free run, both on the inlet and the outlet side. So on this, ideally, from a, from a flow dynamic standpoint, I pr prefer to see at least 20 inches of pipe free and straight into the front, and 20 inches coming straight out the top. But this system, if you've seen all of my videos, you know that this is already better than most just because of the two inch plumbing that was used here. Uh, but as with almost all these videos, there's still some room for improvement here.